Yesterday, the Islamic Society of Fargo-Moorhead held an event called Meet Your Muslim Neighbor. Good turnout, roughly 400 people attended. So with us tonight is the event's chairman, also a recent graduate of at UND, got his doctorate in English, Mozab Bajaber. Thanks for being here, sir. Yeah, thank you. So, obviously, well attended event yesterday. It sounded like it went really, really well. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, what I want to do is, again, ask you some more questions, get some more answers out there, continue this dialogue with you. Maybe you can bring some friends next time. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Because I know there's fear, obviously. We just talked about some polling going across America. You mentioned the article. You've been <coughs> feeling a bit... So, in your opinion, the most important thing people should know about Islam tonight is what? Um, well, is that a uh, religion of... Uh one-fifth of the world. Um, it's a religion, as like any other religion, has its own history, it has its own positives and, um, you know, rough bumps along the way. And, uh, and the Muslims are just normal people. Um, they got the good guys, the bad guys, and just, you know, being human. So how is it being radicalized? I mean, what's going on that's causing, obviously, and I'm going to use this word because a lot of mainstream media are using it, but causing this cancer to take place in your religion? Uh, by cancer, you mean the, the radicalizing, like the yeah. ISIS, the stuff? Uh, well, I don't know. Um, I get two things here. Number one, when we talk about ISIS, we talk about a, uh, a war zone uh, that's going on there. And um, when you talk about war zone, you got all the ugly stuff, the nasty stuff going on there. Um, and when you talk about propaganda, you don't underestimate the propaganda, especially if people are, you know, one of their main targets are, you know, uh, Western media, Westerners, and people, you know, they're trying to recruit people, so... We should be very uh, careful with the propaganda and, uh, and that stuff. So you say it's the um, propaganda from the West that's uh, 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 Well, no, the, the, the ISIS propaganda. Just uh, And, of course, the West has its own propaganda sometimes. You see news and stuff having their propaganda. Maybe I'm trying to get to the psychosis of this thing. So what, what has people go and read their Koran and then go, you know what, I can go cut this person's head off or rape young women or those mm -hmm. things of that nature. What's going on in the context of what they're reading in this book that's not long ago? Yeah, I can do this in the name of Allah. I don't know. No, I'm, not, I'm not the person to ask, really. I, uh, you know, I'm not the person to ask, you know. And I, I have no idea what's going on in their head. You know, probably someone needs to do some psychology studies or, you know, like just go into their heads and, and figure out. I, I don't know. I mean, it seems very um, uh, dangerous and scary to me as well. So. so now you or your parents are from Saudi Arabia. You spent some time there. So I want to kind of get some context on your okay. take on I think what a lot of people are seeing as well is they're concerned about... Um, Korea, you know, really come to the United States. And so I guess my question for you is, are you okay with the secular governance? Yeah, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm more uh, towards a liberal understanding of things. So, um, so I like to say, um, like, live and let live. Um, you want to practice your religion, go ahead and do it. You want to live your life the way you want. I mean, everybody is free to do whatever they want. Um, as long as people are respecting each other and, you know, being decent and, and nice. So... So, so I'm not, a, yeah, so I understand, I, I, I'm, more, I'm more towards secular, strict separation between, you know, state and religion. And the mosque, okay. So, for example, yeah, like, if there was an opportunity for you to have maybe Sharia tribunals, United States, would you be for that? Well, or? well I don't know what, what the word Sharia is, really, to be honest with you. Um, I, I explained this yesterday. You know, when we talk about Sharia, what is Sharia exactly? Um, in Arabic, it means, Sharia means law or legislation. Um, and there are some... If you look at the Quran, there are some general guidelines on how to do things, but then it's very, very loose. It's open to interpretation, and people can take it all sorts of ways. So the word Sharia, you know, we, when we talk about Sharia, you know, we have to define what does that mean. Um, if you're talking about um, like an ISIS understanding of Sharia, or you're talking about um, a Taliban understanding of Sharia, then I'm we... I'm about a Saudi Arabia understanding of Sharia. Or a Saudi Arabian understanding of Sharia. We got lots of issues. Like I, Personally speaking, you know, we got lots of, I think there's a lot of issues that need to be sorted out and clarified, and, um, and things are really open to interpretation. You can't just say, this is it. I'm speaking on behalf of God, you know? But I think that's where people are questioning, because most Muslims would say, this is the word of Allah. You know, dot the I's, mm -hmm. cross the T's, word of Allah, the Quran. And my understanding is that when he went from Mecca to Medina, mm -hmm. that's when it really became more of a, of a law, a political ideology, over than more just a religion. And so they're saying, hey, when we follow this, that does constitute Sharia. Is that semi-accurate? Uh, well, you're talking about the Quran? See. Uh, the Quran is a very, it's an old text. So it's a 1,400 years old text. Um, it's written in old Arabic. Um, and it's very, very, you know, it's open to interpretation. So it depends on who you are and what political background you come from and um, and you you know a lot of people take it all different sorts of ways so should the US Constitution trump Sharia 
Yeah, I, I'm, I didn't understand the question. Then. So should the should the U.S. constitution? Because many people are concerned that hey, what's happening now, obviously in light of Europe, is that they're trying to have Sharia now overtake some of the laws that are taking yeah, place in the I, EU. So hold on a second, sir. My question to you is: Should the U.S. Constitution trump Sharia? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, if we, if we decide on what what kind of Sharia you're talking about, uh, but but yes. Um, so what kind a, of Sharia? A secular, kind of Sharia? A, secular, a secular state. So we're talking about the U.S. should have nothing to do with religion whatsoever. You know, and, and law, it should be a secular law. Uh, people could have their own religion and their own worship places. They should not be, you know, imposed on anyone whatsoever. And uh, you is, said that, 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 is that your question? I think question? so, because you just said yeah. it depends on the kind of Sharia. So what kind of Sharia should trump the Constitution? Oh, well, any religion should not be in any state legislation. Um, that's my personal opinion. I, know, I, I, I don't know about many people, but as I told you, I'm not a... A scholar in these issues, but no, I, I just that's, why I, opinion, that's yeah. why I appreciate you being here because, again, I Correct, think people yeah. just want to have this conversation. And so, one of the things the Muslim reform movement we had Azra Nomani on a while back, and she's okay. kind of leading this Muslim reform movement, if you will, saying, Hey, we want a secular government, we don't want Sharia to be sort of a political ideology or, or a law across the U.S. Correct. And again, you being from Saudi Arabia, I know they got some tough rights for women. So, my question to you is one of the things this Muslim reform movement is for is we support equal rights for women. Mm -hmm. including rights to inheritance, witness, work, mobility, personal education, and employment. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay, good. Yeah, I think, yeah, of course. Um, so my yeah. last question for you then is yeah. this, because a lot of people that mm -hmm. we have on Facebook or that contact uh, different aspects of the show, they'll go, hey, Chris, you know what? What this gentleman said tonight I think is fantastic, but they're going to go, but what about Takiya? Are you familiar with Takiya? Uh, yes, I am familiar with Takiya. I, I actually did not so, know. So I did, can yeah, you set the I context did, for people about what yeah, that is? Okay, yeah, I want to talk about that a bit. Um, you know, um, I, I actually didn't know about it until someone told me, you know, this is Takiya, you're just lying. And, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and I went and I, yeah, yeah, and I just read, I was like, what is, like, what is he talking about? And I read and I read about it, because, like, I'm not a really Islamic scholar of any sort. I mean, I'm an English major, as you know. <laughs> uh, so I really, I went and I read about it. It's basically... Number, there are two things. Number one, it's a Shia concept. So 90% of the Muslim world is a uh, Sunni. Um, so it's a Shia concept of, you know, keeping your head low if things are going so rough and, you know, not, you know, showing up and, you know, and, and, and you know, you know, worshiping in front of people. That's what it means for Shia. But then 90% of people don't believe in that, like Sunnis. Um, they don't believe in that. They, they think people should be very open about what they have and, you know, live to their standards. So that's number one. So help me and understand. And the other thing Go is, ahead. the Go other ahead. thing about Takiya is, um, <clears throat> you know, I remember this book, um, I don't know, I, I, don't, I forgot what it's called, but I remember I read about it in anti-Semitism. And they used to have this book about, you know, these, you know, Jews trying to take over the world and they have these secret plans and, and they're trying to establish this. Um, and it's just like pure propaganda. And this is what's going on with a lot of, you know, the propaganda against Muslims is that, oh, they have their own plans. You know, they're laying low and you just wait until they eat you and they'll gonna, um, and they're gonna just have a lot of, you know, like they're, they're, when, once they get the chance, they'll do it. So, so yeah, I think that's just a stupid argument, really. All yeah. right. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one, thank you for being here. I think it's very important we have this conversation. Thanks. I hope you'll come back. I hope you maybe bring some friends back. We can continue having this dialogue. Does that work for you? Oh uh, yeah, sure. I. Uh, I will. Yeah, Congratulations on getting your doctorate, by the way. Thank you. I mean, that's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we'd love your thoughts. And back, clearly we've got to do a better job of understanding. So that he and I were talking off the air. I've said this many times on the show. You know, he could be in the crowd and be like, oh, okay, if he said so, because we don't read Arabic. So we'll continue this dialogue. But first, want to know your thoughts. We're going to come back to some of your points of view right after this. Text us, email us. We'll be right back.